Henry Hodges has been described as the most mentally ill prison inmate on death row. He killed three people in civilian life and attacked a prison guard years ago on the inside. He has remained in solitary confinement for decades. Um, we have an inmate that cut off his penis. In October, when Hodges mutilated his own genitals with a hidden blade, the story made headlines far beyond Nashville. His injuries are hard to describe or even imagine. But prison video, released by a judge's order, is offering a clear view of this man's physical predicament and the decision-making by those in charge of his care at Riverbend. Care his attorney described as torture. He has been restrained now for eight days solid. The Nashville Banner and Associated Press filed suit to obtain the video you're about to see. It is graphic. The video begins with Hodge's transfer back to the prison infirmary. He had undergone reattachment surgery at Vanderbilt and according to his lawyer had been calm and cooperative over 10 days in the hospital. Hodges is transferred from a wheelchair to a typical prison mattress. He's wearing a hospital gown. Then a team of officers begins to apply what are called four point restraints around the wrists and ankles. First utilizing metal handcuffs, then Velcro and fabric straps. The staff is concerned about documenting every step of this process. Will you tell him to hold off on the blood spell until I can take pictures? Hodges speaks to the nurse. I refuse the whole medical treatment. Whatever, I refuse it. Twelve and a half minutes into the video, Hodges screams for the first time. His hospital gown is cut off and he is left with only a covering over his midsection. According to court documents, he remained in this state with the lights on day and night for 10 days. When he is agitated um, by the corrections the officers, that's when his psychosis becomes worse. Without any accommodation for toileting, he is eventually laying in his own waste. Nurses use wipes to clean him, but there's no evidence of soap and water or disinfectant. Are you pulling this as tight as you can? No, those are gone gloves. Damn, man, damn. The mattress is changed. Sit back, sit back. He appears to receive a sedative shot. Later, two more restraints are added around his biceps. And a portion of his arm appears to turn purple. He complains of pain. Ultimately, necrosis sets in, and Hodges will lose what is left of his penis. Dr. Arthur Kaplan is a renowned ethicist at New York University. Most of the healthcare stuff in prison is quiet, off the books. You don't know what's happening. We discuss the Hodges case with him. It's a world left to, unto itself. It's not really a hospital. It's not really a nursing home. Keeping him going, running his appeals, finally getting him set up for an execution. There's going to be a ton of legal battling because of his mental status. If you're really saying, save me money and make sure, you know, he's in the setting that is the easiest to manage him, it's the psych place, it's not the prison. The state is contending that Henry Hodge's self-injury and the resulting court action is just a ploy to delay or eliminate his execution. I find that argument somewhere between unpersuasive and ridiculous. Do we take people who are clearly mentally ill on death row, treat them enough so they can understand that we're gonna kill them and then kill them? as heinous as his crimes may be, when you're that mentally ill, punishment starts to become just cruel and pointless. You know, this guy is the person who needs the transit to the psychiatric facility. Once there, we can figure out, is he in fact treatable at all, which will raise 
a separate set of issues. But if he isn't, there he stays, you know.